suffer or whatever. But to say we will continue to have this conversation and we will work towards a solution that works for individuals and works for our community. Um, and I don't know what it will be. We have a lot of different uh, ideas that we're talking about, but it's the sort of thing that we, that we take very seriously. Um, and that you have to take very seriously if you're going to live in community with those who have different traditions and faith and still be part of a real community. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to, anybody has to give up covering their hair or give up their commitment to modesty, but it means you have to have a dialogue about how can that be preserved within community. And um, it, it's been interesting to see that played out. Um, and I think the same thing you know, with dietary issues too. Um, we don't have kosher food service at the college, so we, we have to wrestle with it. There are sometimes meals served at the college that we, we don't participate in. And does that separate us from the community, connect us to that community? How does that, how does that work? Um, the third uh, concept that I want to talk about is um, servant leadership. And that is the idea of a college education. Uh, being not simply for your own individual benefit, but for the benefit of the world, for the greater good. Um, and liberal arts colleges in general, and uh, Austin College in particular, I think, really has a commitment to that sense that our learning is not just for us alone. When we are educating students, it isn't just so that they can have better paying jobs. We're not opposed to their having better paying jobs. We like that, that's a good thing. But it's not the only thing. Um, they should be educated so that they can make the world a better place. When you have a model like that about the purpose of education, it means that what happens in the classroom is very different than just a lecture or a transmission of knowledge. You have to engage the student, um, and you have to make the student's whole self be a part of the education. So at a college like ours, we say, we educate students' mind, body, and spirit. We care about all of that. Um, and that doesn't mean that while well, the professors care about the mind, and the chaplains care about the spirit, and the football coach cares about the body. Um, it means that everybody cares for all three of those things. And our faculty members, our professors, want students to bring their commitments, their beliefs, their traditions, their faith into the classroom. Um, so that it can be part of that conversation and so that there can be real learning from each other um, and students can learn from each other. It's, um, again, in my experience, very unusual in that kind of a diverse uh, community. I think when we hold on to this idea of religious diversity, if we focus on hospitality <coughs> and accompaniment and servant leadership and some of those other things I talked about, we will have something that looks very different from the kind of secular model of diversity, which is polite, distanced tolerance and respect. And again, I'm all about tolerance and respect. If, you know, it's a good thing. But I, I, I like to dream we can have something more. Um, I know we have a child in college and one in high school. And as we think about our own children's education, it's so important to us that they find an educational home where they can be uh, supported in their own path, supported as, as Jewish children, um, and yet also have the benefits of a first-rate education. And so for us, that's been very important, and we've been very blessed to have found liberal arts colleges as the place where, for our children at least, that is possible. Um, I hope that we can have questions, dialogue. I'm happy to answer whatever I can answer. And uh, I have spent many years as a college professor, so if you don't ask me questions, I will start asking them of you, um, <laughs> which I'm happy to do. Yes, sir. Do you think it can be achieved in bigger universities, or in this globalizing world, we have to divide big universities into mm. smaller colleges? or a bigger community, I just think it's much harder because you can have critical masses of groups and you have more space to spread out. And I think it is comforting to sort of stick with our own group and um, not to find those ways to interact if you don't have to. So I think it's harder in bigger communities. I don't think it has to be impossible, but I think we have to work at it. Um, and I think 
often where it does work in bigger communities are in local places. Sometimes you may be in a department or you may be sharing a laboratory or you may be in an um, apartment building with a diverse group where you can make a sort of space for genuine community within a bigger space. Um, you know, ideally, I would think, couldn't it happen in countries and governments and the world? Um, but I, uh, and I, I, you know, I hope that it could. Um, but I think it often has to start small. And that's not always how we think. Sometimes we get to start big and work down to the small. I have a question. Sure. Uh, you're uh, not specific to the Austin College, but hiring, pro hiring practices within the, uh, within the universities. Uh, Someone from a very different background. Let's say I mean we have Muslim uh, ladies, Muslim women attending here, mm -hmm. and some of them are actually, actually PhD students. Sure. They will probably probably applying for faculty positions in the colleges. Yes. Uh, the way they appear, and uh, of course I mean this is basically a country of freedom, and everybody is uh, basically allowed to do and engage in research and teaching. So uh, what may be the uh, mm. suggestions or what may be the uh, uh, future prospects of uh, applications. Uh, I think that's a, no, that's wonderful, and I think it's you. You know, for those of you who are thinking about becoming faculty members um, and wanting to be a professor, it is really helpful to think about what kind of things are really important to you. And you will find you're absolutely right. I, I would be shocked if there was a public university um, in this country where you were discriminated against overtly. You know, nobody's going to say, sorry, we don't hire Muslims or people and women wearing scarves. You know, the, in France, you might have that. You might have a, a public university in France say, we don't hire women wearing headscarves. But in the United States, you won't have that. You will absolutely find that kind of tolerance, that kind of um, uh, acceptance. Um, you may not, however, find much in the way of embracing. And you may be in, a, in an environment where you are expected to sort of, it's all very fine and well, but leave it at the door. You know, it can't come into the classroom in any way. And you can't engage your students around these issues about why this might matter to you. Um, in a smaller college, you will probably find a more inviting atmosphere um, where that difference is seen as actually a positive, where it's seen as something to be valued and not just something to be tolerated. So you want to ask, I think, a lot of questions and you want to observe very closely the kinds of university settings that you are in. And if you um, find yourself you know, at a job interview or visiting a campus and there's respect but nobody says to you, tell me about how you think about the relationship between religious observance and the calendar of the year, you know, you might test the waters and see how it comes up if you bring it up. And there are very different moods and tones. When uh, we were at the University of Illinois teaching um, and needed to take a day off from the class, you know, where the class was regularly scheduled to um, teach, uh, because say it was Yom Kippur or a holiday where we uh, don't work, um, the department chair Tolerated that. Absolutely fine. Make sure you make up the class. Here's the policy. Um, when at a liberal arts college, I went to the department chair as a brand new professor and said, next week is Yom Kippur. I won't be teaching. I've made a plan to work. He, he said, I really hope you'll talk to your students about why that's important to you and what that holiday is about and why it matters to you. Not to try and, con I mean, you know, it wasn't to try and convert them in any way. It was to explain that this is a commitment I have, and I'm more than just a brain. I'm a soul, I'm a body, and in a liberal arts environment, that's welcomed. Um, so those are very different, I think, uh, communities. It doesn't mean you can't be very, very happy in either one. There's just, there's a difference. Um,